How do you get from DNA to proteins? First, DNA gets transcribed and processed into mRNA, which is then translated into proteins at the ribosome, one codon at a time. When a codon passes through a ribosome, a transfer RNA with the complementary anticodon gets charged with the appropriate amino acid and binds to the codon, adding the amino acid to the polypeptide chain. But the rate at which this occurs depends on the codon being translated and its frequency in the gene. Not all codons, and tRNAs, are created equal. With 61 codons specifying amino acids in the genetic code, it makes sense for each cell to have 61 tRNA species, one for each codon. However, most cells have far fewer tRNA species. In E. coli, there are 46, and in human mitochondria, only 22. Despite lacking the full gamut of tRNA species, these cells still manage to translate the entire genetic code through a phenomenon called wobble-base pairing. When a tRNA binds to an mRNA codon, the first nucleotide in the tRNA's anticodon has some flexibility in pairing with the third nucleotide in the codon. For example, a uracil in the first position of the anticodon can pair with either adenine or guanine in the third position of the codon. This means some tRNAs can pair with multiple synonymous codons that encode the same amino acid, like UAU and UAC, which both code for tyrosine. So if two synonymous codons result in the same amino acid, is it fine for a gene to use either codon? Not exactly. Some synonymous codons occur at higher frequencies than others encoding DNA. The two main factors believed to affect whether a codon is common or rare in a gene are the abundance of the corresponding tRNAs in the cell and the favoring of certain bases over others at the anticodon's wobble position. Rare codons, which are used less than 10% of the time for the amino acids they encode, typically get translated more slowly than common codons. But just how big is the difference in translation speed? After researchers discovered how to measure protein synthesis rates, it was found that certain genes with rare codons were translated 50% slower than ribosomal protein genes with more common codons. In 1989, three researchers were the first to quantify translation rate differences within an individual gene. They measured the translation time for the wild type, or naturally occurring, like Z gene in E. coli, then compared it to the translation time for six different copies of the gene in which they had inserted various numbers of common and rare codons. The lac Z gene codes for beta-galactosidase, a protein that breaks down lactose. The gene only gets transcribed when allolactose, a slightly modified version of lactose, is present in the cell. So the researchers treated their cells with a molecular mimic of allolactose to induce transcription. They then used a pulse chase method to measure the time taken for the mRNA to be translated. They treated the cells with a pulse of radioactive methionine, letting the cells incorporate this amino acid in their beta-galactosidase synthesis. After 10 seconds, the researchers chased the pulse with an excess of non-radioactive methionine to stop any further uptake of radioactivity. They took cell samples at rapid intervals and extracted the beta-galactosidase, then measured the accumulation of radioactivity in the protein. The samples were placed on an X-ray film that captured emissions from radioactive methionine as dark bands. By analyzing the number of methionines present at various time points, the researchers were able to deduce a translation time of 81.8 seconds for the wild-type gene. Using the same approach, they found that the average translation time for the modified LAC-Z mRNAs ranged from 83.9 seconds in the gene with zero rare codons and 24 common codons inserted, to 86.5 seconds in the gene with eight rare codons and 11 common codons inserted. Taking into account the number of common and rare codons in each insert, the researchers concluded that each common codon was translated at an average rate of 12 residues per second, while each rare codon was translated at a rate of about 2 residues per second, which was 6 times slower. Because of their slower translation rate, rare codons are typically considered suboptimal for gene expression. With the rise of gene engineering and codon optimization in the early 21st century, scientists can now manipulate a gene to contain more synonymous common codons. This increases the gene's expression levels and translation efficiency, and therefore boosts protein production, such as for vaccine development. However, replacing rare codons with common ones may not be as perfect as it seems. Rare codons are believed to play an important role in regulating polypeptide folding and secretion. Furthermore, Rare codon regions of DNA tend to result in polypeptides with beta-strand structures, 
while common codon regions usually give rise to polypeptides with alpha helical structures. By changing codon usage, protein misfolding may occur, causing altered function and detrimental effects on the organism. So while it may be tempting to pump a gene full of synonymous common codons to increase the translation rate, it's important to remember that both rare and common codons exist in DNA for a reason, and pacing is key to winning the race to translate.